Hello everybody, Tycho here with the JVPM team again and in this video we're bringing you another demo for uh, your business application. Um, hopefully this is uh, one of many videos that are coming out uh, giving you ideas and showing you some of the things you can do and uh, how to get started once you have generated your business application. So again, this, my starting point as usual is star.jpm.org I'm going to go ahead and configure my uh, business app real quick. For the version, I'm going to pick 7.13 snapshot because in this demo we're using some of the latest features um, that we have been working on. So, you know, that's the they're included in 7.13 snapshot. Uh, the rest I'm going to keep default. So there's my zip. I'm going to unzip it and move it to a folder of my choice. Uh, so let's move it. All right, so I have my business application here. Uh, once I have my business app, um, let's we can already start uh, with the demo. Now, the first thing I want to do is, for the sake of time, uh, I do have a very simple two business processes that we're going to use in this demo, and I want to show them to you quickly in my workbench that I have currently running. Um, for uh, the dashboard demo, we're going to use two very simple business processes. One is a business process that includes uh, simple user tasks uh, that gather some information about a, a user. The simple hello process is the second business process for a demo. It just prints out some process variables. So it's nothing you cannot do within like five minutes in the workbench. Uh, what I do want to do once I have my K jar, I want to get um, this project from um, the uh, console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my business application K jar. I'm going to run git init, git add everything. Uh, first commit. So I'm good with git now. And I'm going to go to my uh, project in the workbench and click on settings. And I'm going to get the git URL, let's say. I'm going to copy it quickly. And here in my KDRAW project, I'm going to go back and say git remote add upstream and the URL to my uh, project in the workbench. So I'm going to say git fetch upstream, git rebase upstream master. So I'm going to get pull all the stuff down. All right. And now let me check in my resources. All right, I got the two business forms, uh, the business uh, <clears throat> processes. And the important also thing is I did build in here also the forms, the forms. So if you go, for example, the one of the tasks, you can come here and say uh, generate all forms. So I have uh, in my K jar now the process form and also the task forms that my editor built for me. Uh, once I have this, um, I can simply try to clean install it, see if that works. All right, so I'm good with that. Now I'm going to go back and look at my business application service. And I'm going to uh, open it up in my IDE. So in IntelliJ, I'm going to say open and go to where am I? All right, I'm in videos. Where am I? Where am I? Where are my videos? Uh, dashboard demo, uh, demo and I am in my business application service. I'm gonna open up the POM, open it up as a project. All right, so, so far we haven't made any changes except get a couple of business processes for KJAR that will then get deployed. Um, out of the box, as we saw in the previous video, you have your index page uh, up and running, you have the REST service of the uh, execution server up and running, and then you can start working on it. Uh, what we want to do is uh, build very quickly a dashboard, and we don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So one of the things I do want to uh, show you that we have been working on is a little 
um, project called Timeleaf Kia Server Dialect. Um, and what this allows us to do is it gives you very easy access to all the a lot of different uh, endpoints that you already have with your execution server and the REST API that comes with it. And it allows you to very quickly, with simple tags, for example, just one-liners, um, already test out uh, your business application to see actually what's going on. And it's very good for quick uh, dashboard creation to just see, hey, does my stuff work, Can, and, and, and to test it out. Um, it does use Timeleaf. Um, and uh, that brings the power of, of being able to extend it and create your own uh, kind of dialects, what they call it, or uh, extend the basic HTML nodes to create um, some that you can then use and, and then do specific things. So I'll put the URL of this down in the comment um, section description section but let's go through it's got very good documentation so we're going to go ahead and use it so installing the dialect i just have to put my dependency here so let me go back to my project i go to the palm file go to my dependency uh section and add my dependency let's say here at the bottom and i'm done with that um, okay now the next thing i have to do is i have to go ahead and create uh, HTML page for my service project. Since uh, Timelift Kia Server Dialect, where we just the dependency that we added, adds also Timelift to it, there are some certain defaults that you can use without having to really configure anything. And by default, uh, what Timelift does is under source main resources, um, if I create a directory here called templates and put my HTML in here, so let's say we're going to create our demo.html. Um, when I go to, uh, it's going to serve for my templates. And these are the files that Timeleaf is going to actually evaluate uh, before it, uh, um, they get uh, parsed in the browser. So, but once I, if I want to display this demo HTML, of course, I have, this is a Spring Boot application. So I have to go and create a controller. So in my... Uh, source main Java, I'm going to create an application controller class, very simple. Um, I'm going to make it a controller, which is just a, a spring thing. And I'm going to create a get mapping for slash demo, all right? Um, uh, and this is just do demo, you can call it whatever you want. And we can get passed in the model, for example, if we want to. And we're, that's it. We're just going to return a demo. And this string then for time leaf, if we put demo, it's going to map it to source main resources, templates, demo.html. All right. So right now we have that going on. Now let's go and start creating our demo page. Um, First things that we have to do, let's create our HTML tag here. And our HTML tag defines two namespaces. One is the Timeleaf namespace, and one is then the uh, Kia server uh, namespace for the dialect that we're actually going to use in our HTML. Then in our head section, um, because the dialect uses uh, Bootstrap and, and, and jQuery and stuff like that, uh, this thing has a cut and paste section that we can just use as is. So I'm going to cut and paste this. And I'm going to come to my um, body section. And I'm not very good with HTML or you know UI and stuff like that. But what we can simply do then is start looking, okay, let's see what else. Um, <clears throat> um, okay, let's go through here again. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Because some of the... Um, uh, directives in this dialect um, use frames we have to enable the same origin frame headers so what we have to do is also very simple you go to your default web security config and uh, you add it so what we can do is simply do this and we're done 
All right, so we have added the option for um, the information to be displayed inside of a frame if it comes from the same origin, in our case, localhost, since we're running this locally. All right, so now let's see all the directives that we have. Now, one of the directives here is called Kia Server Process Dev, so I can take that, and in our HTML page, we can just paste it, put it in. So I want to see first the information about all the process definitions that I have going on uh, in my business application. Uh, we can put a couple of break tags here, for example. And then I would like to also have information, uh, let's say, about process instances. So there is a directive for that as well. And you can go through the documentation and see um, things like what are some extra parameters, how to extend this yourself, how to skin this yourself and provide your own display for it even. Um, and that's also possible with this um, Kia server dialect. Um, you can do really a lot of things with it, but it makes things very simple. So I'm just going to do that. And at the end, I would really like to see some process image because that's really cool to kind of understand um, what's going on with my business processes that I have in the app. So I'm just going to add this directive here. And really I'm done. Um, I really don't have anything else um, to really do here um, except kind of figure out, okay, let's how to run it. Um, I'm going back to my service and I'm going to go ahead and you can either do MVN clean install uh, or you can do MVN spring boot run. Or what we usually do is we get, um, or what we recommend is to use the launch scripts. Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and launch, uh, run launch as, uh, um, let me check. Oh yeah, sorry. You run it with the clean install option. <laughs> Something new every day. So this is going to go ahead and build my model my KJAR and my service and also launch it, launch it as we discussed uh, in the previous video and I'll also link that video below. Um, <clears throat> all right, so now we've built it. The launch script is going to go ahead and launch our service app. Okay. Just wait for a minute or a second <laughs> for this app to start up. <clears throat> almost done yeah it says started application now I go back to my browser localhost 8090 now this is still going to give me my index page however as you remember we mapped in our controller slash demo uh, to point to our demo application so let's go to slash demo all right and this is how quickly we build a dashboard um, what happened is since our KJAR included our two business processes that we saw at the beginning, the simple hello process and the hello uh, world with task process, they're showing in our, as in our process definition. We do not have any process instances available yet simply because you know, we haven't started any processes. Uh, and of course, our, since we have no process instances, there is no images to display for them. So let's go ahead and start, first of all, the simple hello process. So um, we have a start button here that we can use. Now this will pull in a model, model uh, with the process business process form. Uh, this is the form of the process. And if, as we can see, this form um, <clears throat> takes in a first name and a last name. So you can do whatever you want here. And let's submit it. Now when we click Submit, this will actually start the business process for you. All right, and as we can see now in process instance info, we have an instance of simple hello process. Now the state is two, which means it has completed, but yeah, he didn't have any wait state, so he just went through it. Um, and we can see the ID. Now let's take a look actually what happened under process instance images. Now we should have a process instance of one which matches with um, the ID of this one. If I select it, I can see that it is annotated that my business process has started. You went through the say hello uh, script task and it completed. So 
oh, everything is grayed out. That's why it's uh, that means basically every node um, in this business process has been uh, ha has been completed and the, the process is done. All right, so now let's take a look at when we have a wait task, for example, hello world with task. So let's start an instance of that. This will bring in the process form of this business process. It takes in things like address, city, first name, and last name. <laughs> and for the sake of the demo, we're just going to type some real values in there. <laughs> no. And click submit. Now, if we see here, we have how do you say um, another process instance and this time it is in state of active and we see that we have one business task uh, user task that we can actually work on and if we take a look at our process instance images for number two which is the ID of the business process we just started we can see that uh, we have completed the start node, but currently, and this is marked in red, um, we are at the user task called gather info. Um, we also see that uh, this task has been initialized by uh, us, we are a user, and this is the default uh, authentic uh, user that you can authenticate with. Uh, with your business application, I, of course, you know you can read the docs and see how you can change that and create your um, new users, groups, and stuff like that, um, callbacks, all that stuff. All right, so in order to complete our task, um, let's work on it. And for this case, we can just click on this link with the task name, and this will bring our task form to us, our task form uh, takes in uh, an out address and an out city. Those are the two uh, data outputs of our um, task. And now we see more options. We can either release it. So we say, okay, somebody can, else we can work on it. We can start it. And in, the, in our case, we can just complete it. And if we look at now, our uh, process instance is no longer in uh, wait state. We have completed it. Uh, because we completed the user task and if we look at here now we see that we have completed our user task we went through the script task um, and uh, the process is complete so I think this is a very quick demo you can see that very quickly within really minutes you can get up and running with uh, something fairly sophisticated for your business application you can do quick demos and of course um, using this time leaf, uh, there's some other things here. Go through the docs, you know, see how you can do. Uh, there's a lot more stuff this can do, um, and you can use simple tools. Now, important thing that I want to mention is you can build all of this, of course, without this time leaf dialect. Uh, you can do it yourself. And in the next videos, I will actually go through that how you can actually do this without anything. Uh, and maybe build your own uh, components and stuff like that, libraries that uh, you might get ideas to do. So overall, this is it for this demo. I'll leave the links in the description if you want to um, use the Kia server dialect that we used in here. Again, if you can see here, I mean, seriously, we built the whole kind of dashboard app with maybe 10 lines of code. Um, it is really that simple with JPM business apps, the API that you have available, um, the type of uh, add-ons that like this one that you can add to it and stuff, more stuff that's coming in the future, I think it's going to make it a great deal. Um, I do wish to ask if you're already listening for this long that uh, we are looking for community contributions to this. If you've seen this and you want to extend it, you want to help us work on it extend it, add more features to it, more useful stuff, um, you know, hit us up on IRC and everything, and we'll be happy to, to have your help. Um, again, thanks a lot, um, and, you know, good, good luck building your business apps. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.